So I heard a joke this week, and I thought it was funny. And then I thought it was kind of mean. So I want to tell it to you. Is that okay? Okay. So there's a busload of Minnesota Lutherans. And they get in an accident. And because they're Lutheran, they go to hell. But when they get there, it's really warm. And they're kind of liking it, you know? They're like, wow, this is really warm. And they start taking off their jackets, and they start thawing out, and the devil comes in and says, you guys are supposed to be miserable. And the Minnesota people, Lutherans, say, well, it's actually kind of nice. It's always cold in Minnesota, and we're kind of warming up, and it feels nice. And so the devil goes, well, it's not supposed to be nice. So the devil walks and changes the, the temperature in Minnesota, or in hell. <laughs> And, um, and it gets really cold down there. And so they start putting their jackets back on, but they start uh, hugging each other and high-fiving each other and hooting and hollering, and the devil comes back and says, oh, you're supposed to be miserable. And they said, yeah, but now that hell's frozen over, the Vikings must have won the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's one of the best jokes I've heard in a while. But the more I thought about it, the more I didn't like it, because... Obviously, the person who wrote it didn't have a high regard for Lutherans um, because they so quickly say that Lutherans were sent to hell. Um, as we celebrate Reformation Day, and what it, uh, we celebrate the Martin Luther's courage on and, and, uh, this day, and, or actually on October 30th in 1517, when he nailed the 95 Theses to the door of Wittenberg, uh, his courage to say, you know, I don't agree with everything that the church is doing. Uh, and so we're going to talk a little bit about the Catholic Church today. But it's the Catholic Church 500 years ago, um, not the Catholic Church today. I was thinking about this, and this might be a little controversial. I think Martin Luther would really like the Catholic Church of today. Uh, and I think Martin Luther would really like today's Pope, especially. I don't know if you saw this past week, but the Pope officially said, 500 years later, it's time for Catholics and Lutherans to reconcile. Uh, which is kind of a cool thing for the Pope to say. Um, but, uh, but for whatever reason, somebody, whoever wrote that joke, um, didn't think too highly of Lutherans. And there's kind of this, uh, uh, you know, there's like a hundred different denominations of Christianity. And a lot of them don't get along with each other, and they all kind of make fun of each other. Um, and Reformation Day is a day where we Lutherans stand up and kind of beat our chest and say, look at us, we're Lutherans and we're right. And I know that um, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Um, instead, I, I, I would like to talk about how we can, as denominations and even non-denominational churches, uh, kind of agree to work together. Um, and I think it's all about storytelling. I was thinking about this, and I know for some of you Red Sox fans, it was a rough night. Um, any Red Sox fans here other than Chip? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Okay. it was a rough night. It was, it's a rough way to lose. Uh, but I'd want to tell you a story about two weeks ago. This day, two weeks ago. This might make you feel better. Um, as a Tigers fan, we were looking pretty good. We were up one games to zero in the ALCS. And that day, that game, we were up 5 nothing. When a team goes up 5 nothing, you know what their percentages to win are? Like 99%. And if we had won game two, it would be us in the World Series right now. I am confident of that. Um, and so we were up 5 nothing, and then it was 5-1. And then we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, and they take out the starter, and they put in the bullpen. Well, Detroit doesn't have a good bullpen. Uh, and David Ortiz steps up to the plate with the bases loaded and hits a grand slam. And all, every Detroit Tiger fan yells at the same time, are you kidding me? And then the Red Sox win it in the ninth, and they go on to go to the World Series. Um, what's interesting, though, is that um, if you read, read the Detroit Free Press the following day and the Boston Globe the following day, how the writers chose to write the story. All of America saw it. All of America saw the story, but... The people in Detroit and the people in Boston each saw it differently. Uh, the people in Boston talked about their hero, David Ortiz, who for 10 years 
always comes through when they need him. He is he not only is a, he's, he's a great slugger, but he's clutch. Whenever the team has their back against the wall, he comes through in a huge way. He'll probably come through tonight for the Red Sox. Um, he comes through in a huge way, and he did it again against the Tigers. And everyone in Fenway Park knew when he stepped up to the plate with the bases loaded and the team down four that he was going to hit a grand slam because that's just what David Ortiz does. Um, if you read the Detroit Free Press, they talked about the Detroit bullpen. And they talked about how the bullpen has been terrible for years. And they've never done anything to fix it. And then they send these guys out there and they just get lit up by the Red Sox. And they should have left in the starting pitcher and it was all about the bullpen. And oh yeah, it was David Ortiz who hit the home run. And so you have two separate stories about the same story. One of them focusing on the bullpen. One of them focusing on what's important to the Tiger fans. And one of them focusing on what's important to the Red Sox fans, focusing on David Ortiz. I think, in a nutshell, that's what denominations are. They're different ways of telling the same story. Jesus says, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The story of Jesus Christ is true, and it happened a certain way. And denominations look at the way that it happened and say, this is what's really important to us about what happened. And as Lutherans, we look at things like grace and say, that's what's really important to us. And so we start a church and we name it Abiding Grace because grace is what's really important. And so this is how Lutherans tell the story. Lutherans tell the story from Romans today, Romans chapter 3, that the death of Jesus and faith in Jesus has justified you before God. Meaning that your sins are forgiven because Jesus died for you. You're going to heaven because Jesus died for you. Everything that happens good in your life is because Jesus loves you. And that's kind of where it starts and where it ends. It's kind of a real simple story. Um, which is kind of one of the good things about it, one of the bad things about it. Because there really is no checklist that I can give you to say, if you want to be a better Christian, if you want God to love you more, do these 10 things and God will love you more. Because there's nothing you can do to make God love you more. And that's kind of where Martin Luther was in 1517. And the Catholic Church was saying, the Catholic Church was um, doing a little bit of fundraising and uh, they needed to raise money to build something called St. Peter's Basilica, which was in Rome. And so to do so, they were going around, they were sending a man around, his name is John Tetzel, and he'd, he'd travel around Germany and Italy and all over the place, and he would tell people um, that your sins are causing God to no longer love you. Your sins are going to send you to purgatory, and you're going to stay there for 100,000 years. And once your 100,000 years are up, then God may let you into heaven. But if you pull out your wallets today, and buy this piece of paper that says, you have been freed from purgatory, bless you, you can get a ticket to go straight to heaven. And for $10 or $100 or whatever you're willing to pay, you can buy this. Um, it's a checklist, right? And Martin Luther saw that, and he read Romans, and he said, you know, something here is not consistent. Somebody doesn't get the point. And he said, well, that's not the way the church should work. The church shouldn't burden people. The gospel should make people feel loved and understand God's grace. And so Martin Luther said, you know, I don't think that's what we should be doing. And the church said, well, we don't need you in the church anymore. And so they kicked him out. And so Martin Luther said, well, now that I've been kicked out, I guess I'll start a church. And that's kind of where the Lutheran church came from. It's a story of love, a story of grace, but the difficult thing is I can't tell you what you can do to make God love you more because you can't do anything. And in this world, we always want to do more. We always want to earn something. And so as we enter the stewardship campaign, let me tell you this. If you pledge more than you pledged last year, God's not going to love you anymore. If you fill out your time and talent and do more than you did last year, God's not going to love you anymore. If you'd like, I can, I can make an abiding grace indulgence that you can buy that says God's not going to love you anymore. <laughs> 
But if you want one, I'll do it. And I'll sell them cheap. And I'll even get them framed. But God's not going to love you anymore because there is nothing you can do to make God love you any more than God loves you right now. God died for you just the way you are, for the things that you do and the things that you don't do. And God wouldn't change you if God could because God created you to be unique, to be special. God made you perfect in his eyes and God doesn't make mistakes. That's a story I like. That's a story I love. And that's why I'm a Lutheran pastor. I invite you, whether you're Lutheran or not, to tell that story. Amen.